Hello, my name is Dmitry, and today I'm going to show you how I use our brand new feature called Vector Feathering and combine it with the blending modes. Let's create the new file with a new artboard. Let's keep it as is, 500 on 500. And I'm going to create some base for our controller buttons, basically, uh, which is going to be a circle. Uh, right now I'm going to create the some rectangle. Let's go inside of a rectangle and instead of creating a new rectangle I'm gonna go inside of the rectangle and edit the path and I can basically duplicate the path here by pressing command D and rotate it inside. What I basically create is a compound object and you can see here is two rectangles and they are combined together and right now I can go to each rectangle, I change for example round corner. As you can see, let's make it, I don't know, like 30. 30 is good enough. And here as well. I click on the rectangle group here because it's right now it's one single object. And I can whatever whatever I change here, for example, as you can see, gradient works on both objects because they are inside of the rectangle. Let's create the base color. I'm gonna go to artboard, to our background, and change the color to yellow. And we can change it later. Well, let's go and work with our circle here. I'm gonna grab this color from the background with the Ctrl C and copy basically a color, or you can just copy and paste a color here. But I don't want to make a gradient by naked eye, I'm gonna use procedural gradients. Well, I create the new fill and make it vertical, like so, and make it, for example, here is white, white and black on the top. We go to settings of the fill and change the blend to the soft light. And you already see how this blend mode communicates with the base uh, fill. And when we change the fill, uh, all gradient changing as well. Well, I can change the gradient here to make it less harsh, less obvious, uh, by changing like lightness of the color, or I can change the transparency of it. If I change the global color, if I click on the artboard and change this color to the blue, for example, everything changes as well. Let's keep it yellow for a while. Next one, we're gonna add some facets on the top, on the bottom and stuff, and we're gonna make it with an um, inner shadow, inner shadow and drop shadow in the fill change it to the um, just solid like that and we can click on the add feather when we add feather we can change the direction to the inner and basically get the inner shadow however if we take a look closely it's not exactly the um, correct color because it's just gray or like can be black and stuff and it doesn't really work well especially with a yellow color in real life it's no black or gray shadow because objects around cast the color on the shadow and also it depends on the lighting source how to make it easier here I can go and use blend mode again and change it to the, for example, color burn. Because it's so harsh right now, it's basically red. I'm gonna change it with a like closer to gray color. And you can see how it works. This is this is looks way more natural than before. And also I'm gonna shift a little bit our inner shadow because it's equal uh, all around and I just change it here and we change them out to make it more maybe like less less pronounceable yeah beautiful inner shadow with the beautiful colors again if I change the global color here everything changes 
we don't have to change the color of the drop shadow, we don't have to change the color of the gradient, because everything works procedurally. Next, I'm gonna add some highlight here, and I can basically duplicate this layer, and change the Y to the, for example, minus, minus 6. Let's be in minus 6. And I'm gonna change color burn to color dodge. As you, so you can see, it's quite harsh and light because we use lighter than like 50% gray. On the 50% gray, it completely disappears and we basically go closer to black here. I think it's good enough for now. Uh, let's make the our cross button. Here's our cross button with a with some lovely gradient. Let's remove it. Again, I'm gonna create this on fill with a base color and just copy it from the our base from the background. As you can see right now it's quite flat. I want to make the opposite gradient on top of it. Create the fill. This one. Let's make it vertical. Change the color. Here's gonna be white, here's gonna be black. I change it to the soft light again. I like this soft light for the shading because it's not very harsh, it's not overblown the colors and not dramatically change it, but it it feels physically correct and I can basically adjust the transparency of it. Now I want to add some highlights. Let's make it a little bit different. I'm gonna copy and duplicate this gradient on the top to not create it again and change it to the overlay. Add some feathering. You can see already feathering works. Add some nice feathering effect around and I'm gonna change it to the inner to make it works like inner shadow. Add some transparency and you already see beautiful highlights everywhere. I think it's a, it's a good enough. To create a good drop shadow I usually duplicate the base uh, layer and add feather effect, move it a little bit down and I want to make it darker than, than this and I change it to the color bone. Yeah, usually one drop shadow doesn't feel right and we always should think about contact shadow and ambient shadow. Ambient shadow usually is like very very feathered one and contact shadow is a very harsh shadow which goes to the cl close to the object. I'm gonna duplicate bottom layer because it's basically our drop shadow. Duplicate it. As you can see, color burn, because it overlaps with the other shadow, it's darker and I don't have to think about how to make it darker and light and stuff. It just works as intended. And I want to move this one and reduce amount to make it more harsh. I'm gonna make it closer to the object as much as possible. Let's increase a little bit. And the bottom layer, I'm gonna increase the amount. Now it looks way more realistic. For now I see already some mistakes and I want to change the gradient on the top because it feels not correct. Let's change it and inverse it. This is, looks much better. Then we can change the proportions of the cross. Remember we we use the different rectangles inside of one and we can change basically our um, rectangles inside and we can see the size here and I want to change it to 100 for example for each path like so. Looks a little bit better. Then I want to add some circle inside because usually all controllers have this circle inside and I'm gonna reuse this circle what we use outside to place it inside. Let's, my, uh, let's duplicate our ellipse, put on the top and change the scale and change the feathering 
for the inner shadows. Now I am about to add some strokes on this object because it feels like it's not connected enough to the, our cross button. We can just add stroke here, as you can see. And I can change the width of the stroke here, but you can see it goes outside and inside. And how to make it go to the only outside, for example, I can just move my stroke to the background, like so. Also, our feathering works with, the, with this stroke. And I'm going to edit, change the amount of feathering. And I want to change my solid color to the gradient. And I change my blend mode to the soft light. Now I can play with the transparency positioning and stuff. And I just can change the position of the, of the object. And also I can regulate how far my stroke goes. Beautiful. Let's take a look again. Our overall, I think we can add some depth to the cross button and I basically can change the gradient on top of it to make it flat or make it more 3D. Okay, let's take a look. I like the result inside here and I want to repeat it here on the background object and I basically can copy and paste the style of this object to this. Let's copy it and paste. Right now I want to add some small LED light here. Make it red. Let's add some hole where this lamp sits inside. I'm going to place this on the background. Let's make it just black. Let's duplicate this black. Make it a little bit bigger. It's going to be our shading here. I change to the gradient. Let's add some feathering here. And I don't want to make all colors by my hands. I basically always use blend modes. Let's change it to the soft light. And play with the feathering amount and stuff. In this case, I want a really small feathering because it's quite harsh lines, but I don't want to make them extremely harsh. I'm gonna make some shading to the lamp itself. And I create in the new fill with a radial gradient. I'm gonna change it to the color dutch straight away. You can see this beautiful gradient already works here. I want to play with the colors as well. And here add some glowing on the bottom here. Now I want to add some additional glow on top of it and I basically can create the ellipse like this large. Let's take the base color from here. I can just use the huge feathering like so and change it to the soft light. And maybe add the same layer, but with a color color dutch. Or make it lighter. I can change the light here, and I can change the position. And I can change the scale of this lamp. Right now I can group this lamp. and place it 
and you can see how this light make this some sort of illusion of the subsurface in the scattering inside of this plastic uh, material. It even goes outside. And when I'm gonna change the color, global color of the artboard, like my yellow color, let's change it. You can see how these lights changes accordingly because we we use a lot of uh, blending modes mm. let's place it here for now and as you can see, the light goes outside of the artboard and I don't want it. Well, I can click on the artboard and click here to the clip. And that's it. I hope you enjoy it and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and see you later.